Hello YouTube chess lovers and our friends this is Gunjan here and today I am going to show you some of the nice traps exist in Karokan fantasy variations. Now you can use this line as a surprise weapon in tournaments. White start with the move e4 and black responds with the c6 so we have a normal Karokan defense mortar and after d4 d5 here comes the fantasy variation start with f3. Now here there are few good replies for the black. Black can play either g6, e6 or the most critical is d cross e4. And if your opponent going to play g6 or e6, I strongly recommend you that you go through the theory section of this opening and learn about how to handle those positions. But here I am going to show you some of the nice traps exist when black plays d cross e4. After d cross e4, white should certainly play f cross e4 and here the most critical line is e5 and it's very very logical because you can see by playing e5 black wants to play queen to h4 check and not only that if white allows black then black can capture this pawn and that means white has an isolated pawn on the e file and that can be a ready made target for the black so against this white should certainly play knight to f3 so stopping any queen to h4 check and here there are three good replies by the black so black can play either bishop to g4 bishop to e6 or the most critical is e cross d4 against bishop to g4 I recommend you should play bishop to c4 and create a first nasty trap so for example here if black foolishly play moves such as knight to f6 then here comes bishop to f7 check and after king to f7 we have knight to e5 check so not only white regained the piece but black has lost the castle right and please do not forget white has a center as well so that is a one trap exists in bishop to g4 line and let's say even though black does not fall for this trap if black plays moves such as bishop to h5 or knight to d7 then very simple is you play c3 and white has a very good center and next moment white can castle and white can look forward for a strong middle game so that is about bishop to g4 against bishop to e6 I recommend you should play c3 not knight cross e5 because that leads to the queen to h4 check and again white is having some trouble in that line so very solid move is c3 so protecting your center and here in one of my game my opponent played knight to d7 I played bishop to d3 here he played bishop to d6 and I castle on the king side and the general move or the most natural looking move over here is knight to f6 but this leads to one of the disaster for the black and here white will continue with the knight to g4 so now you can see the knight is attacking the bishop and if the bishop doesn't move then the pawn will be double so the most natural looking move for the bishop is bishop to g4 attacking the queen but now comes the wonderful move which is queen to b3 so queen to b3 attacking the two pawns first is attacking the b2 but the most critical is queen is attacking the f7 which leads to the mate so black cannot defend both of the threat and white will have a wonderful game from here onwards so those are some of the sideline traps exist in bishop to g4 and bishop to e6 line but the main idea of the black is to capture this pawn so e cross d4 and giving a white an isolated pawn and certainly first time when I see this position I thought oh black is doing quite fine like black does not have any weakness and white has an isolated pawn but to my surprise I found out that there are some very nasty traps exist and that start with this move by white which is bishop to c4 now you can see the bishop to c4 has a first merit it is looking at this f7 pawn and here there are plenty of chance that black can go wrong so here I try to cover as many as line so let's deal each by turn so we'll start with the worst one to the very good one so first disaster move black can play is this move which is bishop to b4 and this was the case in one of my game my opponent played bishop to b4 here I played c3 
and he captured the pawn and he thought that he outsmarted me because certainly white has this move which is bishop cross f7 and black here simply captured my bishop and at first sight looks like white get the black queen so very simple is queen cross queen but allowing black to appear the another queen on the board so black can capture this pawn with a check and when the king moves up king to e2 the another queen appear on the board and if you look at this position right now black is two piece up so a rook and a bishop is up but my opponent does not think beyond than this in this position there is a mate in fire you can pause the video and you can find it by your own uh, i'm showing you right now so the starting move is knight to g5 check now with the knight to g5 check you can see the king cannot go to the e6 so the only square left for the king is king to g6 and now you can give this check which is queen to e8 check please note if the king goes to the f6 then very simple is rook to f1 check and if the bishop comes in between then we can simply grab the bishop and this is a checkmate so king to f6 is a disaster zone and as well as king to h6 because if your opponent play king to h6 then very simple is knight to e6 with a discover check of the bishop and the uh, if the opponent plays g4 then white can simply grab the pawn and this is a checkmate as well so that is a one nasty trap exist in this bishop to b4 check line now here black can try another check which is queen to a5 check and against this very simple is again you play c3 and you can see if the black capture the pawn then very simple is knight capturing the pawn and white has a tremendous development and not only that right now white is threatening a knight to g4 and castling on the king side with with has all the attack on the f7 so in one of my game my opponent parried this threat by playing bishop to e7 bishop to e7 has a merit of stopping the knight coming to the g5 square but here i simply play e5 so now stopping his knight to coming out from the f6 my opponent first of all grab this pawn and i recapture with the knight and here he played knight to d7 which which setting up a cheap threat it, that if i castle on the king side then black can play queen to c5 check and grab my bishop but to his horror i played this move which is bishop cross f7 <laughs> and uh, here probably i thought he think about 25 to 30 seconds and then he grabbed my bishop and then i played e6 so trying to get my piece back if black goes back then i'll regain my piece with interest so my opponent went for the hill so my opponent grabbed the pawn queen to b3 check he played king to d6 and after bishop to f4 he didn't last for the long but instead of king to d6 if he had played king to f6 then a very simple line is rook to f1 which has idea of giving a discover check and if knight to h6 at this point then very simple is knight to d4 check and after king to g6 we have queen to c2 check and after king to h5 we have a wonderful move which is g4 now please note if king captures g4 or kings go further then that leads to the mate in all the lines and the only move left is knight cross g4 but then a simple reputation is rook to f5 check and white will win the black queen so there is a, another good trap exist in queen to a5 line now the third move which i want to consider is bishop to c5 so black wants to protect his pawn well against this very simple is you go for the castling on the king side and please note if d3 then the king can go on to the h1 and queen can regain the pawn on c2 with a very good position to boot so in one of my game my opponent play knight to f6 attacking the pawn and i simply played knight to g5 so attacking the f7 and here my opponent castle on the king side but the very simple repetition is e5 attacking the knight so my opponent played knight to d5 blocking the diagonal but then he has to face this move which is queen to h5 
and there are so many threats over here you can see these three PCs are attacking the F7 and not only that right now black is threatening a capture capture on the H7 with a checkmate and this is a very wonderful position for the white so that is about bishop to c5 there is another move black can play over here which is bishop to e6 and here white should certainly grab that bishop and after f cross e6 white should play castling on the king side and there are nasty th traps are looming over here so for example if your opponent carelessly play move such as knight to d7 then he has to face this move which is knight to g5 and now you can see the knight to f7 is looming and the only way to stop is knight to f6 but then very simple is knight cross e6 and after queen to b6 we can play bishop to f4 in one of my game my opponent stopped knight to g5 by bishop to e7 but now i simply played knight cross d4 so now i'm attacking the e6 so black has to defend that pawn somehow then most logical is queen to d7 but after this white can play this move which is queen to h5 so please note if g6 occurred then very simple is queen to e5 white will gain two piece for a rook so in this game my opponent play king to d8 and here i played bishop to e3 and he played c5 and now i played a very very good move which is rook to d1 because I, I exploit the fact that his queen and a king are in a line so here after long thinking my opponent played this move which is c cross d4 and after rook cross d4 he played bishop to e6 so giving back a piece because of course white will play e5 but here my opponent goes for this line which is knight to f6 and i played e cross f6 and after knight e6 which has a merit of attacking my rook my rook can simply go back to the d2 uh, further game goes like this my opponent plays knight e5 and I played f cross g7, rook to g8, and I played knight to c3, and after king c7, I double my rook on the d file. The only way to stop me to capturing that bishop, my opponent decided to play this move, which is knight to c4. He completely overlooked this one, which is knight to b5 check. After king to b8, I simply grab the bishop, and after knight takes rook, we have a queen to e5 so that is about bishop to e6 and let's look at the last trap the more natural response and i give you a guarantee that will be occurred in your game the most logical reply over here is bishop to e7 which has a very good idea of stopping knight to g5 uh, here white should castle on the king side please note do not play knight to e5 because knight to e5 leads to disaster after queen to e5 check and the knight is a goner so that's why knight to e5 is not possible so white should certainly castle over here on the king side and most natural looking move over here is knight to f6 and i thought that black is doing very fine over here but you won't believe there are good traps exist in this line so here white should play this cunning move which is knight to g5 attacking the f7 and now here if black foolishly castle on the king side then white has a very wonderful reply starting with knight cross f7 and the usual line continues with the rook cross f7 bishop cross f7 and after king cross f7 white has this move which is e5 and after king to g8 e cross f6 bishop cross f6 if you check the position white is an exchange up so those are some of the nice traps exist in this fantasy variation you should certainly try out this line you never know one of your opponent may fall into this wonderful traps i hope you enjoy and learn my 11th trap video please feel free to comment on my video and i'll meet you soon bye